Welcome to the Bearded Bama Bushcrafter. Working with this Puko that I received. I love this knife. However, one thing about it, the spine is not that sharp. And it doesn't throw sparks. The knife was sent to me. And let's use it. Uh oh, it's damp conditions down here. I'm trying to get a fire going. The big negative for this knife here is the spine. It's too rounded. I can't even work. A little bit of dust off of this piece. I guess maybe I could take a file and work it down. Make it a little more sharper on this back spine. So I'm gonna have to regroup here. I always have my little backup on me. Voila, we have flame, but we do not have a fire. I'm already sweating in this 90 degree August heat. Not good conditions, letting your ferro rods getting wet. One big mark against it, a dull spine. I'm gonna give the smaller one away. It throws sparks. For some reason I'm having trouble getting into the scabbard today. There we go. All right, y'all stand by. I'm down at the shelter. It's been a few weeks since I've been down here. And boy, is it messy. You can look around here, armadillo. Inside, I have some residents. Oh, a big old field rat. Or down here, a swamp rat. Squirrels definitely visit this place. And those things, man, they're, they'll tear up everything. I, I don't like squirrels. I'm looking forward to squirrel season. Process it down. Adapt and survive, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you something about this stuff. It's not made like it used to be. This is so watered down now. It don't matter if it's an off brand or a name brand. It's watered down. When I was younger, I can remember playing with that stuff. And it, would, it feels almost like gasoline. Not now. Sometimes, you just got to adapt and survive. I've been sitting here messing with this fire. Look how damp it is. It's starting to kind of... I've got a good... I can see the coals going there. But I have been fiddling with this fire for probably 30 minutes. Let's check out the temperature out here. 
All right, let's check this out on the old thermometer. That is 82 degrees. I guess that's correct. I don't know. It's kind of cattywampus. With 100% humidity. Oh, man. I'm ready for summertime to be over. My lantern has been knocked over. It's time to do some house cleaning. Let's take a look in here. I've got rat poop over there and over there. They like spiders. Look at this. I'm going to tell you something about the southeast. We've got it all. We've got biting. I had an ant get down in my pants and get me on my butt crack. And there's black ants. It wasn't a fire ant. We've got stinging bees, wasps. We've got venomous snakes, spiders, ants, biting flies, you name it. I want to get this fire going mainly to uh, help with the mosquitoes. That right there helps with mosquitoes. Ooh. Need a cat down here. Check this out. Rat, probably gonna get the hat of virus now. Feel like I'm in a shelter along the Appalachian Trail. Those things are full of mice and rats. I've been needing to come down here and do this. Need some of this shelter therapy. Y'all may laugh at me about the lighter fluid, but I keep it down here at shelter. Um, I'm not stupid. Sometimes it's just so difficult to get a fire going. Do I need a fire right now? No, I don't. Do I want a fire? Yes, I do. Something about coming into camp, getting a fire going, and sweating over it. Plus, there was a lot of junk that had fallen from the trees, from storms, the winds blowing through. See, look over here on the ground. See all that stuff? And just cleaning up. I've got to get me some, some fresh straw down here. It's not too bad as far as being sachi. If you can see my feet. Normally, in the past, I think I'm getting a good bed of this mulch layer built up to where it's actually sustaining some weight now. I'm in a swamp, as you can tell. There's a creek bottom here. But this was kind of a tucked away place here on my property. So when I started the shelter, I came in. I think I've already said this, but I'll say it again. Came in, cleared this little area, and it was just a little debris-type shelter with the material that I cut and processed that was here on site. It used to look like that right there. And over time, materials came about. Majority of this stuff is repurposed material. See, I'm saving the environment, saving the world. It's holding up pretty good. Got the floor in. Last year, year before last, that floor has made a significant difference with... The rats wanting to live here. Four walls, uh, three walls are up. Kind of had an idea. May do it in the future, not the past. Put me a small fireplace right here. I've seen a shelter on the trail. Had an entrance here, entrance here, and had a fireplace. Maybe something. I've got so many projects. What I actually came down here to do was kind of look at the chair and talk about a new tool that I have. In the past, I was down here making some videos. I, you have to forgive me if I'm repeating myself. I do that a lot anyway. And um, It's been a while since I've talked about the chair. And I came down here and made a video this summer, but I don't remember if I posted. I have had just issues with making videos this past summer. Ever since the trapping, old trapping series I did, I kind of went into this funk. And... Uh, it, I was finding it hard to make videos. I would come down and record videos, and basically I would just not post them. And um, I think I came down here one day and was cleaning. Excuse me. And I made a video. I don't remember if I posted it or not. But pretty much same thing going on here today, cleaning. But I wanted to talk about these little augers. This is a newer one that I bought. I think I mentioned it briefly in a past video. Um, my old one, my older one, where did I set it, oh here it is, 
think it's about Raven Tools, Raven, Raven Custom Tools, Raven. See the difference in the depth of the augers? And the cool thing about it, you can put a handle on it, but this one has like a little gouge tool on it. So, when you make your little, what are these called, pinons? You can work it down to the wood. I was going to try to demonstrate that. I like y'all need this demonstration. This thing was advertised hot and heavy on Facebook a few months ago. Now I'm not seeing it so much. And this one, I can't remember how I came across it. I've had this tool for quite a few years now. But this one is shorter, of course. Same diameter with the auger. But it's got that cool gouge piece on it to help you. I think those are called pinons. I think that's what you say. The part that goes into the wood, your hole. And that's nice to have right there. All in one tool. All these I've carved with a knife. And they look kind of ratty. I'm not the expert carver. So let me find a piece of wood and let's let's see what we can do with this thing. This is a piece of wood that I cut back a couple of months. No, not a couple, man. Not a couple of months, about a month ago. I had some pear trees that I planted. And this was one of them. And what had happened at the root graft, it died above it. So whatever one of the parent trees that was part of the, the cultivar that they used to, to make that one specific pear tree grew back and it's, it looks like a, a Bradford pear. It's not producing fruit. It blooms and it has these little small berry-like things, which reminds me of a Bradford pear. So I cut it, and what I'm planning on doing, got enough here, I'm going to make a, a walking stick, a hiking stick, and I've got some, some material here to do stuff with. One piece that looked real good on this pair was this piece. Man, this is a good piece for carving. I thought either I'm going to try to fashion me a pipe out of this pair, cherry, and that briar wood, and I have seen, I think I have seen pear used for pipes. I think this would be a good wood. Or it could make a nice spoon or ladle. I don't know. Just a piece of stock that I'm going to hold on to. So I'm going to cut a piece here and let's see what we can do with it. Let me show you something about these pear trees. Look at these fruit spurs. That's a type of a spur. I used to tell you all about the ID parts when I studied and received, studied horticulture and received a degree. But like anything, if you don't use it, you eventually lose it. I have retained some of that knowledge. But these things right here are like freaking darts. They hurt. They will make your skin crawl when it sticks into your flesh. Mine's still crawling. I'm trying to pause the camera here. All right, so I cut that piece of wood down, and I still have about a six-foot piece to work with on making a hiking stick. I like keeping it as tall or a little taller than I am when I'm working on my hiking sticks. That way, you know, it's kind of that measure twice, cut once type mentality. But I've learned over the years, hiking, and I'm old school, I like a real hiking stick, not those little ski poles that you see everybody doing doing hiking with these days um i like it to be i know i'm kind of getting off on a rabbit trail here that's how i work i like to kind of be about shoulder height i had one when i first hiked a section of the appalachian trail and it was up to my ear and i noticed as i was walking and it would hit a rock that noise would be right in my ear so i learned to cut them down that way it's not amplifying into my ear so, with the two augers, my older one, it doesn't have the gouge. You can't really do anything with it. This one has a gouge on it. Let me pause the camera. 
I'm going to tell you what, on those videos, man, they look simple, easy peasy. Pear may not have been the best wood to, I don't know how much pear wood you're going to find in the wood, in the woods. But I just happened to remember I had this piece and I was going to use it as a demonstration. I got it down in there about that deep. Now the thing would be to clean all this excess material. And I'm trying to think about how to do that. All right. Y'all stand by again. This is why it's always good to practice with your tools before you go out into the field. That's a lot of work right there. And what I was doing, a lot of unnecessary work. Probably this tool, and they may have mentioned it. I don't know. It looked like in the videos they were using oak, hardwood and softwood like pine probably going to be a much better piece, uh, a tool to use on a piece of um, pine. Because this right here, you're having to, I'm having to take this and use my baton and hammer. Bam, bam! And it's exerting a lot of energy just to try to get that piece down. Right now, it would be easier to carve this thing. No, I don't know. It's, it's removing material pretty good. So, But that's what I'm saying. When you get a tool, use it. Practice with it. This is the first time I've used this. And um, I like it. Let's see. I guess I'd need a handle. I wonder. It's got that little pilot point on it. I might have my gloves, but I have taken my gloves from down here. I always keep gloves in my kit. Let's see. It's biting pretty good. It's going to work better with a handle, get more leverage. Oh, man, that's getting, that's biting in there good. Definitely, we need to make a handle. I had a handle. Let's see if this will, if it won't break. Mm, all right. Everybody's like, oh, another wood auger demonstration. Didn't get in there deep enough. This wood is still, still very green. I'll tell you something about fruit tree wood. It's good for barbecue and cooking. Any of your fruits, it's going to add a little bit of flavor. Man, cherry. Um, I had some cherry burning it on a fire, seasoned piece of cherry. Look at My rag is getting to work out today. That cherry really smelt good. Of course, cedar is fantabulous for burning in a, in a fire. Uh, I wouldn't too much use it for cooking. But any of your, your apples, your pears, your pecan. Got a lot of pecans around here. That's some fantastic wood for cooking. All right, guys, I'm going to probably do this again in another video. But I'm going to have a piece of wood that is proper. It would probably work good on this because this is a lot drier. But I'm going to cool off some. It has got so hot. And I thought I'd make this video and say hello. Chad, hope you enjoy this video. Um... Anyone else enjoying this video? It's been a while since I posted one. A couple weeks. It's time to get back at it. Sweating here on this hot August day. I am ready. Once again, I'm going to say this. I'm ready for some cooler, colder temps. Still got a little while here in the southeast. All right, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this little makeshift video. Y'all take it easy. And everyone take care. See ya.